Yeah, so the title is uh, uh, <laughs> uh, the right kind of AI. I'm not going to answer this question, but I'm just saying that there's lots of different kinds of AI and, and I'm doing research on some of these different that kind of things. So uh, a very visible part of AI research currently is um, things that try to replicate human competencies like uh, natural language understanding, uh, speech recognition and different kinds of computer vision and that kind of things. And, and here, uh, mo the difficulty in most cases is that it's very, very difficult to actually understand how uh, people think, what people do and, and what is going on in their head. And this is the reason why most of these things are uh, handled with these different kinds of machine learning methods, because it's very, very difficult to explicitly model uh, these, uh, these kind of things. Uh, there's lots of lots of other kinds of AI, and, and these are the kind of things I have been looking for in, in, the, in my research in the past 25 years or more. And uh, uh, in these cases, uh, the uh, goal is to uh, model uh, abstract thinking and, and uh, that people do. Things like decision making, planning, different kinds of problem solving, and uh, under, yeah, different kinds of uh, understanding of complex systems. Um, these, in these cases, it's typically not uh, uh, desirable to act, do actually exactly what human beings do. And the reason is simply that human beings are actually quite poor in, in, in these things. Uh, uh, and and in, in many cases, uh, the uh, capabilities of different kinds of AI in these areas have surpassed human uh, competencies already decades ago. So in, it's not a question of trying to do exactly the same thing as human beings, it's mostly like doing things, these things still much, more, uh, uh, much, much better and to apply these things in practice. And unlike in, uh, on the previous uh, problems on the previous slide, the difficulty here in most cases is computational complexity and this means that uh, we, even when we might be able to exactly uh, describe what the computer should do, we exactly know what are the objectives, what are the possible means for uh, achieving these objectives, uh, calculating uh, or computing a solution that actually achieves these objectives uh, might be too difficult. So the computation times uh, of, of com computer computing something, they grow very, very quickly. And uh, in, for bigger cases, it, it's practically not possible to uh, obtain solutions. So it's not possible to obtain the best possible solutions. And this is why this whole research area in AI has emerged. So try to do very, very complex decision making, reasoning, uh, uh, planning, that kind of things in, in a practical, useful uh, way uh, for the kind of things that uh, people uh, try to do these things in the real world. So this is the area I have been mostly been looking at. The applications of uh, uh, the stuff on the previous slide, they can be found everywhere. So all of the uh, uh, parts of the society, uh, 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 all of the industries, energy generation, manufacturing, logistics, transportation, banking, service industry, and so on, so on, so on, so on and so forth, uh, have this kind of application. So, but in, 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 in the uh, current world uh, now, most of these things are managed by human beings. Human beings are doing the decision making, maybe with the help of some software systems, but uh, still the decision making is mostly at the highest abstraction level is by human beings. And, and the goal, of course, in the future for AI research would be to automate these things and to be able to do all of these things better, faster and cheaper than is uh, currently possible. Um, my Claim here is that uh, one bottleneck, even though the many of these technologies actually do exist, one bottleneck for actually applying these technologies in practice is that uh, their deployment uh, inside the, uh, the kind of software systems we currently have, which are mostly uh, produced by human programmers writing 100,000 lines of code or 1 million lines of code, is, is an obstacle for doing this. The problem is that uh, the software systems human beings generate by programming code, well, the kind of people we educate at Aalto University and other universities, uh, th that software is not flexible enough. It's uh, very difficult and expensive to uh, construct them and expand them and modify them. And uh, 
embedding uh, AI in, in their most general and more com most complex forms is very, very difficult uh, within, within the kind of software systems currently being uh, uh, created. And this will be the one of the main obstacles of actually having AI being used in, in, in uh, the kind of applications I was mentioning earlier. And uh, my research vision currently and in the last uh, several years has been actually address exactly this problem. So how to do, how to generate large software systems in a way that is uh, besides being uh, inexpensive and fast and uh, well, uh, uh, successful, uh, well, reliable, so that we always succeed in producing the software system we want to produce. We also want to prepare for the future in which uh, much of the decision making the operation of these software systems can be automated by embedding different kinds of AI in them. So this is the research goal and, and the, the my, my current mission. So I want to automate the software production so that uh, uh, more useful forms of AI can be used in practice in all, all, all the application of areas of, of current uh, software technologies. So uh, the setting I have been uh, uh, where, I've been, where I've been using this or doing this is, is this project I've been running at the, uh, our computer science department in the, in the last couple of years. And we only produce at this stage uh, uh, some of the most usual kinds of software systems, uh, web applications, information systems, the kind of software many of us are using on a daily basis in our work here at Alto and elsewhere. So uh, we have a very high level specification language for describing the functionalities of these software systems. And from that specification, we generate fully functional uh, software ready to be deployed uh, with a very, very, very high level of automation. So basically, once we have described the functionality of the si software system, everything is automated until the, the running software, except some small things like, uh, well, could be a big, big thing. How does, for example, user interface look like? This is the kind of things we cannot, cannot currently automate fully, but all, everything else in the software production has been automated fully. And uh, this is the thing we eventually want to commercialize in the, in the uh, next couple of years. Uh, we are targeting uh, uh, a setting that is fully compatible with existing software infrastructure. So we still are using completely conventional database management systems, uh, conventional user interface technologies, and so on and so forth. So basically, the, the thing we produce automatically is this middle box here, which is currently produced by human programmers writing uh, code in Java or Python or some, um, some conventional programming languages. And uh, Current project status is that we have uh, lots of uh, demonstration applications, uh, not very big, but yeah, medium size. Some of them are quite complicated. There's like a copy of the Facebook, like social, social media, social networking, uh, uh, blogging, uh, some university related um, uh, things like uh, uh, academic journal, peer reviewing and, and, and publication process and these kind of things. Uh, uh, sort of medium-sized applications produced fully automatically, plus some uh, UI customization so that they look nice when, when you're looking at them and, and using them. Um, next steps in the, in the next years uh, in my research would be uh, to build on uh, this framework. So th this framework could be commercialized independently, but additionally, we want to make AI reality in, in many, many other aspects. So building on this foundation, we want to add all kinds of intelligence to software systems in highly automated ways, uh, uh, like uh, adding assistance functions in existing software systems when using those software systems is very difficult, or automating partly, partially or, or fully some of the tasks people carry out when using those software systems. And uh, uh, when I'm thinking of the society's infrastructure things, all kinds of uh, uh, manufacturing, uh, uh, transporters, and whatever areas. There's lots and lots of uh, things like uh, scheduling, timetabling, uh, resource allocation, these kind of problems, embedding those kind of technologies, already existing technologies to current software systems is, is very difficult, and this could be also done uh, with high level of automation. And, and making, making, uh, making complex software systems production much, much easier than what it is today. 
Uh, and yeah, that's it. S brief conclusion. Uh, I believe that AI will be changing everything. It will not change everything very soon. Not in the next five years or the next ten years. It will take time. One of the main obstacles is really how uh, complex software systems are built. AI itself is uh, software, of course, but much of current AI research views AI as something completely distinct from existing software systems, software in infrastructure. And, and this, this disconnect thing here uh, between these two things is something I have to uh, think has to be fixed for AI to actually be uh, deployed in the real world in real applications. Thank you.